What's important to know about Apollo Aero is that we're making everything you know, in-house. We're not farming it out to different companies to do this and that. We're basically able to go A to Z, which is the very beginning of conception, into design, 2D, 3D, all the way to a final producted part in-house. And I think this is what makes us better than the rest. We're making parts perfect and they have to meet our standards more than anything else. Every step along the way, we're doing everything the best possible way to ensure that this product is a gem. It's like a diamond. Here we are, we're in the first step of the process, which is the cutting room. We have our Gerber cutting machine over here. It's a 24 foot long cutting table. We cut all of our pre-preg and materials on this table. Uh, it's very critical to the process. It's a, a very repeatable means to cut the patterns, the 2D patterns that we make fast and effectively for the laminators who are getting these, these pieces. It's just like a puzzle that they put together. So the first step, of the process is we actually release these what we call travelers and these travelers will actually follow up each part around for transparency and traceability of all the materials there is an event that happens we can easily go back and we can find out who what where our quality management system was tailored for uh, the oems like toyota and Solanus. and you can see each layer of material gets stamped with this ID number. That stamp, it directly correlates with the batch number of the material, the date it was cut, who cut it. If there is any issues with the material later on, we can quickly identify which parts may have been affected by that. The first step in a, in a newly developed project is you know, making the 2D patterns to cut. What we'll do is we'll actually start off with paper patterns. We'll, we'll get these as close as we can and we'll use the table to digitize it then bring it into AutoCAD, get it all nice, and then we actually cut it in paper again. Once we get it exactly how we want it, then we can actually start cutting. If we had to do this by hand, cutting a hood would take probably close to two days with all the layers that we have. We can cut a full hood in, in, in less than an hour and it's precise exactly the same each time. Over here, you might see that it shows a yield of 87.8%. So that's showing you what you have for actual usage and you have about 12.2% of waste. Save you know, that expensive material as much as possible. After the material has been cut and kitted, for example, this, this B-side GT3 RS hood, the laminators will take each piece and it's just like a sticker. So they're sticking it to the mold surface in a very particular order. There's many layers. There's very specific places that will reinforce, like for example, where the hinges and latches are, we'll do extra reinforcement to strengthen those areas. This is actually a carbon fiber mold, our preferred choice of tooling. And the reason being is, well, one, that the thermal mass is, is relatively low in comparison to steel. The CTE is also extremely low. So when we heat this up, it's not going to expand. It's going to stay in the exact geometry that, that we intended and what we had validated it to. We have our 15 foot long autoclave. It's a five and a half foot diameter. So it's absolutely perfect for automotive use. We can fit hoods, we can fit rockers, we can fit just about any automotive product in here. We have some Toyota tools in here. They're making the Toyota Supra rocker and rear blades. And then we also have some private label aftermarket um, customer parts here. The process is, is after laminators have put all the layers of carbon fiber down, they're gonna put the consumables, which will be a, a series of stacks of materials designed to you know, basically keep the, the resin from saturating the breather, and the breather's there to you know, make sure that the bag doesn't get suffocated. The part will get vacuum bagged leak checked using an absolute digital pressure gauge to ensure that we have the least amount of internal bag pressure and that will be our leak indication it will get hooked up to our autoclave along with thermal couples to each part and that's critical this will ensure that when we're doing our cure cycle whatever the lagging part may be which will be for sure one of these steel molds it will ensure that it gets its full one hour time of soak time so when we close this door what we're going to do is, is kick a, a specific recipe we made and it's going to basically kick the nitrogen on we have a nitrogen generator over there it produces the gen uh, the nitrogen and and keeps it in storage tanks behind the autoclave. So once we kick on the recipe, it starts filling up the autoclave uh, with nitrogen to whatever the recipe is. In this particular case, it's gonna be like 90 to 100 PSI. And it's also gonna be at the same time ramping up to 200 
50, 60 degrees. And then once all the tools inside the mold have hit the soak temperature, the soak time starts. So it's a guaranteed soak. And we produce our own nitrogen here. The reason we use that rather than just typical compressed air, which we can use it, but with an inert gas like nitrogen, uh, it basically makes a fire impossible inside the autoclave. And even though our laminate thicknesses and the laminate prepreg types that we're using, very low risk because they're not thick, it's still a risk that exists. We don't have to be concerned at all about a potential fire. So here's just an example of a part out of the autoclave. It's actually a Solanus Challenger part of the wing. It hasn't been put together as you can see, but you can get an idea of the surface quality out of here. And this is from a carbon fiber mold. It looks quite nice, there's no pinholes. And basically once it has passed this milestone of inspection, it will go off to the trim room where it gets trimmed. We're checking many things. We're checking the weave direction. We're looking for defects, bridging, you know, um, weave distortions especially are a no-no. You know, you could have a part that is seemingly perfect when it comes out of the mold, but if it has one tiny defect, our quality standard is we don't accept it. We have this flashing around the perimeter of the part. This will all have to be trimmed off by hand very precisely. We have to get within, you know, less than a half a millimeter of, you know, the tolerance of cutting and make sure the two halves fit really tightly together. Here you can see it's just the Challenger spoiler, but it has upper and lower half that will be bonded together. Obviously these two pieces haven't been trimmed yet, um, but you can get an idea how they'll get glued together. This is uh, an A side to a Challenger spoiler. This has to get cut by hand and it takes immense of skill and practice to get to the point where, you know, someone can actually cut this by hand uh, with confidence. Here we are in the bond area. This is where any piece of carbon fiber either is getting joined to another piece of carbon fiber. It could be 3D printed parts, it could be metal parts. Everything's gonna be assembled here and glued together with usually typically epoxies, but we do use some other adhesives depending on the application. This is a Toyota fixture. It bonds together the Supra rockers. It has these vacuum pads, which will hold in this particular case, the bottom surface of the rock rocker and then what would be the main surface of the rocker here. Uh, we're able to run a bead of glue and then just drop it down into position and every time it will repeatedly put that rocker together in the same exact position. So here are some rockers for Toyota. Again, they just came out of the, the fixture. They've been cured. They're actually ready to move on to the check fixture before they go off the paint. So what happens is they'll go into a specific go, no go fixture and that's gonna be what determines, is it in spec or out of spec? This room is the paint prep room. This table just got a series of parts ready to go into paint. You can also note that the Traveler is with each part. We have a sand blaster in the back, which we use for smaller parts, just to prep the surface. Otherwise, we're gonna be doing a lot of hand sanding, hand prepping of paint uh, for the surface. The next step is actually physically painting the parts. So they've been prepped. They're gonna go off to the paint booth. They're gonna be washed several times with wax and grease remover. They're gonna get taped off if they need to get taped off. And then they're gonna actually get physically sprayed with you know, an OEM level clear coat. It's an automotive standard size paint booth. We'll spray you know, all our products inside here. Typically an OEM uh, grade clear coat to ensure top quality. So we have certain customers with certain specifications like Toyota, and they use very special paints as well. Here's showing two different 991.2 GT3 RS hoods. We can do almost anything, custom paint, do custom clear coats with like different tints in it, whether it be blue or red. We have a lot of options. We offer all kinds of specs options. Um, it could be anything from, you know, forged carbon to different kinds of twill carbons or even just special weave carbons. So we're gonna head off to the last step before final inspection, which will be the polishing room. The guys here are actually, you know, hand wet sanding, getting all the orange peel out, getting any dirt debris or anything else that would be considered unsightly. And once that's been done, they'll run a polisher through all three steps of the compound uh, process. It goes through this rigorous check of looking for things like micro scratches, orange peel, any kind of defect that would be considered you know, non-conformance to the customer. You know, and our standards are very high. They go back and forth through inspection and polish until they're absolutely perfect. Here we are at the last step. This is the inspection area. It also does double as a assembly area. So we have a couple QC people that will come and look it over. There's a checklist that they follow 
um, for the criteria of what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. The traveler, for example, will be the, the last thing that will get checked off at the very end that will determine whether a part is deemed passed and ready to move on to the customer or not. We're making everything you know, in-house. We're not just our own brand as Apollo Era, but we're also a private manufacturer to private labels and an OEM manufacturer. We're able to get a lot of exposure with different companies, with different standards, different requirements, and it really helps us grow as a company. We typically do pre-preg autoclave, and that's the key advantage to us. It's not what we're limited to. We also have capabilities of like bladder molding for hollow parts or doing resin infusion, whether that be for tooling or very specific products. There's a process for every product, so we're not limited to autoclave, but autoclave is the preferred method because we can get the absolute best quality pre-preg with the best quality weave, finish. Every step along the way, we're doing everything the best possible way to ensure that this product is a gem. If anyone wants to inquire about products that we have for sale or even possible development of products, you can reach us through our website, hollow arrowcom and you'll find our portfolio there of all the products we make. We focus on high-end exotics. If you're, you're looking to get something developed, even if it's beyond automotive, we're not limited to any particular industry. We, only thing we'd be limited to is size, right? But we are capable of doing a plethora of different products.